Collectors Magazine for the holidays. The USFL, the Rebel League that the NFL didn't respect but feared. This must-have features interviews with players and coaches like Bobby Hebert, Marv Levy, and much more. Hundreds of photos will take you back to the 80s when Donald Trump was just an emerging name in pop culture. Hall of Famers like Steve Young, Reggie White, and Jim Kelly all got their start in the USFL. Order your Silver Anniversary Magazine at USFLonline.com. Hello. Hi guys. Hello everyone. We're back. <laughs> We're back. What is that from a Stephen King movie? Is I, that from I, don't I don't know. know. It sounds like an alien movie. I don't know. I do like Stephen King, though. I think I have something on here that we're going to talk about Stephen King today. Actually. I don't know who Stephen King is. So yeah, he's the horror sense. movie. Uh, like, not horror movie. Um, horror book writer. Like a f- uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Action oh, okay. writer. Mm-hmm. All right, guys. So, um, <laughs> welcome to our sixth show of wow. The Third Wheel. My name's Alexa. My name's Brandy. My name is Kaylin. And we are the third. So, that wasn't that smooth, but whatever. Yeah, uh, happens, we're working sorry. on it. Normally, it's really smooth. Um, okay, so we'll start with Wayback Wednesday, like we always do. Yay! Yay. <laughs> Alright, so today we're going to talk about some theories that will ruin your childhood. Dun, dun, dun. Are you guys ready dun, dun, to dun, have dun, your dun. minds blown? <laughs> Everything is going to explode. <laughs> Lapenta, watch out. You're going to have to God. clean up all the brains all over Lapenta. Okay. So you guys have ever heard about those like crazy theories that like all what this is what the show means this is what the characters in those shows mean because people like psychoanalyze all the characters from like Rugrats, SpongeBob, so they just destroy our childhood. Just yeah, just to ruin everything for you. Um, so t- the first one I have is the Rugrats theory. Um, this one's actually kind of messed up. So. My laptop's being like when super slow. When I first slow. heard of this one, I thought it was true, and it really made me upset. How about you start talking about it? I'm just going to look it up. Um, all right. Let's see. So the Rugrats, um, there was a theory that Angelica actually imagined yes, all of the characters that she was like a, she was spoiled or something or something happened like her she mom was died because or she was like an only child and her mom never yeah, paid attention yep. to her and neither did her dad yeah because her mom was like a businesswoman so yes. she never had time for her so they left her in a little corner and she imagined all these kids yes <laughs> yeah <laughs> and yeah. it was like so she had imagined um all the babies and that's why they could talk to her and that's why she was just always talking to herself so she was never talking yeah. to the babies all the mischiefs that she got into it was all herself so basically i think it, it was like a little gross on how they described on how like um they all the babies never came to be it was like yeah they chucky hi, chucky was real actually i think chucky okay. or maybe if he wasn't i don't i don't know about chucky but i know phil and lil never like were born oh yeah phil and lil like, that. like the their mom never actually had the babies so angelica did not know if phil and lil was going to be a boy or a girl so that's why she imagined yeah. a boy and a girl set of twins so weird. it's just a little scary it's to so think weird. about. Yeah. Um, I'm just gonna look it up now because my laptop is going. The specific okay, this is the Rugrats theory, and it's like from Creepy Pasta. What everybody, when they were 12 years old, used to yeah. go on and just freak themselves out at 2 a.m. and just go to bed and just well, try to go to bed. But uh, oh, this is kind of gross and not gross. This is kind of morbid. Um, the Rugrats were really a figment of Angelica's demonic and unimaginable imagination. <laughs> Chucky so died Angelica. along with his mother. That's why Chaz is a nervous wreck all the time. Tommy was born, but he was a stillborn. Oh my god, that's so sad. <laughs> and that's why Stu is constantly in the basement making toys for the son who never oh, had oh a my chance. God. That's, that's really horrible. sad. And this is what, oh my gosh, this is actually really um worse than what I was saying about the DeVilles, Phil and Lil. The DeVilles had an abortion, and Angelica couldn't figure out whether it would have been a boy or a girl thus creating the twins. Yeah. So, so and then the only Rugrat that was not fictional was Dill. Uh, however, Angelica didn't know that the difference between Dill and her creations, and mm. because that's why Dill didn't follow Angelica's commands. Oh, so interesting. There I, had a, I had a Dill. You had a Dill doll I or something? I had a Dill doll, yeah. That's cute. Dill was cute. <laughs> I liked Dill. He was annoying. He was you thought Dill was... He didn't do anything. Especially when he grew up. <laughs> I when oh, all, all grown up. up. He was, he was cool. crazy. I thought he was cool. Why did Tommy have purple hair, though? That's what I want to know. Stu had purple hair. Did he? Yeah, so he inherited it from his dad, obviously. Interesting. <laughs> he maybe, maybe Stu dyed it, and then Tommy just, like, wanted to be like his dad, maybe. and he dyed it also. And Dill was bald, like, until he was a teenager, I'm pretty sure. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. Same, though. <laughs> All right, the next one I'm going to ruin for you guys, or we're going to ruin for you guys, oh, is SpongeBob. SpongeBob. Oh, SpongeBob. Okay, thanks, Kayla. <laughs> 
analyzing SpongeBob last night. It was <laughs> ridiculous. <laughs> like, oh. okay. Really awkward. Thanks for the invite. Oh, that well, you're the third wheel. Like, obviously. <laughs> What do you think? What do you expect? <laughs> okay, so here I go typing in Spo- Oh, I spelled SpongeBob wrong <laughs> on my computer. Um, oh, yeah. well, I'm in college, it's fine. <laughs> with SpongeBob, um, it was based on the seven deadly sins. Yes, that's the most popular yeah. analysis that I've seen. I don't seen. know if there's any other ones, but um, SpongeBob was. What did you say SpongeBob was? SpongeBob um. is a word that I can't really pronounce that well. <laughs> <laughs> it's like oh, naive, naivety. Naivety. Yeah. And then um, this is what I found interesting. It's supposed to be like all the seven de- deadly sins, obviously, but Patrick is um, sloth and Gary is gluttony, which I thought really? it would be the other way around because Gary's a snail, so I would think, oh, he'd be lazy, he'd be the sloth. And then Patrick, he likes to eat. He's pa- a I don't starfish. care. Patrick is gluttony. I don't care. Right? Like, I don't think that those were correct. But um, And then Sandy is... Um, I think she's pride. Oh, okay. Um, and Mr. Mr. Krabs, Krabs is greed, greed obviously. Definitely. Um, so these are just some things to think about. I don't know if any of these show creators intended for any of these things I to be true, so. or if this was the backstory. I just know SpongeBob was supposed to be an adult show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That one I know. And what um, do you mean an adult show? It's like, supposed to it was like an Adult Swim movie. type show. It was supposed, oh. to, yeah. So yeah. Um, I guess like. Did you remember, like, the first couple episodes, it was, um, the sardines and, like, yes. the pizza delivery? I it was kind pizza of Pizza delivery is my favorite episode. Really? Yes. That, but see, that was supposed to be, like, a satirical, um, satirical adult kind of adult no, one show. No, 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 Um, um the Ed, Ed, and Ed, Eddie one is next. Um, this one's kind yeah, of messed up. Yeah, I don't know about up. Ed and Eddie, but... This one's kind of messed up. Creepy Pasta last night, though, <laughs> watching that Squidward oh my suicide God. video. That was, was a little... That was a little dramatic, yeah. but it still scared me. <laughs> Yeah. All right, so I don't know about you guys, but I really liked Ed, Ed, and Eddie. Like, I, I did not honest. like Ed, Ed, and Eddie. I did I not like Ed, Ed, and Eddie. Before. It's one of the longest-running Cartoon Network shows. Is it really? It was on for a very long time. It was I'm killing not, it. I wasn't a fan. <laughs> I wasn't. It was so dumb to me. Yeah, like, same. And, and they I'm used to, stupid. I like, like that stuff. Their <laughs> skin used to come out of their lines. Like, they did not color in the lines. See, like, I didn't like that. I couldn't watch that's it. That's part of this theory. See, this could all be, there could be a reason to their undrawn coloration. Okay, so... Um, it was obviously created back in the 90s. It's a pretty simple and wholesome show, it says. Um, so with three kids named some variation of Edward. And maybe it's not so wholesome, this article is trying to prove. Um, so yeah, it's saying this theory proposes that the, all the children on the show are actually dead. And the neighborhood they live in is purgatory. But then again, they said that the... Oh, never mind. Uh, <laughs> it was like they said the same thing about Lost and it turned out to be bad or something. Um Anyway, saying that this can't be crazy because some of the kids already look like they're dead. Pretty much everyone in this neighborhood has weird skin yeah. tones, yeah. Um, odd colored tongues like corpses might have. So like Ed had a blue wow. tongue. Oh, that's so really weird. It could have been like he was dead. So they were all basically dead. That's what they're saying. That's that's um, there's no adults on the show. Um, they never move. If you do see them, they're silhouettes. The closest yeah. thing you see to an adult is Eddie's older brother, and he wasn't really that nice, and he didn't really... Th- that's only when they left the neighborhood. They left Purgatory. Um, that's so weird. And then, also, the setting of the show is hard to pinpoint. So, like, some some episodes, like, sh- uh, showcased a typewriter, and then some showcased a computer. So... <sighs> And like a cassette tape. Sometimes they know what that is. Sometimes they don't. So it was. That's weird. It wasn't all in one time period. So that kind of like makes sense. Like oh, some kids were they died in different oh, time periods. Oh my goodness, this is too much. So I can't take this. <laughs> all right, so yeah. let's go, let's go through the characters. Do you have a Rolf? Yeah. <laughs> like the farmer guy. Apparently he's from 1903. Um, what's his name? Jimmy with a uh, Johnny. Johnny with Plank. His he was from 1922. Um, it's making me sad. Yeah, <laughs> seriously. I don't want to know this. Well, you're going to... I'm told you I'm going to ruin your childhood. <laughs> 1939 is um, Ed, I guess. Oh, no, Eddie. Sorry. Eddie, the, like the scamming one. Okay. With, that's obsessed with jawbreakers. Um, Jawbreaker. Ed, <laughs> Ed, kind of the doofy Ed, was from 1953, and his sister Sarah. Um, I don't remember this girl's name, the blonde hair. I, I don't know. The girl I didn't watch. The girl with the blonde know. hair that somebody had a crush on <laughs> um what about those trailer park Naz, girls? her name was Naz. oh yeah th- they're from i guess the same period as they were insane Ed. um but Naz, the bl- girl with the blonde hair is from 1979 so she's like a peace and love hippie kind of girl um and not really peace and love but um you know what i mean and yeah. then 1989 is from is ed with the two d's so double d okay 
and yeah so what they're about all from different the kid with the retainer on the end yeah he's from 2000 Ooh, recent jimmy i think his name that was 14 years ago. oh it's so sickly recent. apparently the anta- this is what you were asking the kanker sisters the antagonistic kanker sisters who frequently abuse and berate all the other kids on the show are actually demons Jeez. placed in the purgatory to torture them coincidentally they are the only regular characters who have pink tongues just like non-dead wow. people so alive. that's crazy i thought that one that was, was one of the crazy that was like a really good one that was a good one wow um and then the last one i have written down here is the sesame, sesame street, street one i have no idea about the sesame street one i didn't I either but i just looked it up thinking that there might be something because you know there's always something people always yeah. come up with something and it's their birthday yes. 45 years wow sesame street congratulations 45 years of elmo that's so i love it who's your favorite sesame street character big bird yeah i always liked zoe I feel like Zoe was recent. I feel like she came no. in. Yeah. Zoe and Elmo were always like when, dating and stuff. <laughs> when I was three, I went to um, what is it called, Sesame Place, mm-hmm. my and I took, just went there. And I took my first steps towards Big Bird. Oh, so that's like beautiful. The first time you ever walked. The yeah, first time I ever Big walked Big was Bird? towards. Yeah. Big oh my Bird god! When I was thank you, Big Bird, for teaching Caitlin how to walk. That's beautiful. Thanks. But I'm about to ruin it for you with this ad analysis. Okay. So get ready. Okay. <laughs> um, so apparently the theory is it's a mental institution. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Um, so Yay! I also heard that um, Count Von Count is like the leader of it because he doesn't live like in the city. Okay. And he, like, I also heard that he just has like a touch of OCD because he likes to count and he always I counts everything it. he sees. I can um, see it. Big Bird is a giant adult with the mind of a five-year-old, so he's just like a little rudimentary, I guess. Um, he suffers from hallucinations. He has an imaginary friend that nobody else sees. That's Snuffy. The Snuffleupagus guy. I love Snuffleupagus. So apparently Big what Bird's is crazy. He? Is I feel like he's supposed to be like a mammoth yeah. elephant kind of thing. Something like he's that. A, he's a Snuffleupagus. He's not really he's cool. anything. He's a Snuffleupagus. He's cool. um, cookie Monster's addicted to cookies. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> um, so addict. He's, yeah, he's supposed to be like represented an addict. Um, Bert is obsessed with weird things. Um, <laughs> Bert and Ernie. I used to have a little Ernie doll. You had really weird toys. <laughs> no. <laughs> like Dill and Ernie. My, f- my best friend is two years... One of my best friends is two years younger than us, and every Christmas, her mom gets her an Elmo doll. Oh, really? my God. Speaking of Elmo, Elmo is um, a narcissist. Wow. Because <laughs> he speaks of himself in the third person. He's like, oh, Elmo's world. Like, Elmo ah! loves... Elmo loves you, or Elmo loves Dorothy. Like, all that stuff. So weird. I yeah. miss Elmo's world. Yeah, it was so cute. Yeah. It was Elmo's world. <laughs> Da, da, da. I have like the new Tickle Me Elmo that's like really legit and like moves. I thought they all did that. <laughs> no, I have like an old one too, but like. What's this the difference? One, like, I think this one stands and like, I don't know, there's some difference, but it's better. <laughs> also, better those one. were really scary because every time I got a talking doll, like it would always go off in the middle of the night. I remember I had a Care Bear that would, would just say like, I love you, like I'm a tender heart, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> so like one night it wouldn't be quiet and I threw it down the stairs. Wow. And then during the middle of the night it flew right back up the stairs and i was like that's really scary he's possessed and then i like <laughs> told my mom the next day that the doll was like possessed and my mom was like i threw it up the stairs so like, <laughs> thank god because oh she was like goodness. why would you throw your doll down the stairs alexa i was like because it was speaking to me at four in the morning <laughs> if you were my child and you said that to me i would be concerned <laughs> well but my mom did she saw it fly down the stairs she threw it right back up Thanks, Mom, for scaring me. Hi, Mom, by the way. Hi, Alexis, Mom. <laughs> Hi. All right, so who wants to see which Sesame Street character Ooh, you are? Me, Caitlin does. Okay, brought to you by BuzzFeed. <laughs> what up? <laughs> <laughs> really, though. Okay, so this quiz, I guess it's kind of long, but it's okay. Um, t- so the first question is, finish the line. Sunny days, sweep in the... First one's clouds away. Oh God, really? A OK. Blah blah blay. One two three. <laughs> Hello day. Waving hand. Come on. Wait. <laughs> Wait. Do it's like a little the, girl. The, the first one. It's like a little girl waving her hand. Come on. And then ooh, ooh I know this one. The first one. The clouds away. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I would have gone with, oh, God, really? No, I'm just kidding. Um, do you miss your childhood? Eh, every so often, not in the least. Nah, it was just the cruddy, it's just as cruddy <laughs> as things are now. Never really thought about it. I'm still a kid physically. I'm still a kid emotionally, oh of course, but I also love being adult. Yes, so, so, so much. Yes, so, so, so much. <laughs> okay, which of these was your favorite Sesame Street 
diddy. <laughs> diddy. I don't know what a, a diddy. diddy. I'm gonna go with it's like a short. Okay. Um, I don't know if you can see these, but these are all pictures. There's like Hold the on. ladybug's picnic one. That one's my favorite. Remember I don't one, remember two, any three. Of this. three, two, one. One, two, three, four, five. Six. I'm an aardvark. I'm an aardvark. I don't remember that. I don't remember any of these. It's even Sesame Street. Let's go with eh. I don't like any of them that much. That was a weird one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, arts and crafts time. Choose a construction paper color. Red, orange, yellow, gold, green, light blue, dark blue, and purple. Ooh, light blue. Light blue. How do you feel about cookies? How many cookies are we talking here? Sure, I'll have one. Yuck, I hate cookies. I guess I'll eat them if there's nothing else around. Gimme, 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 gimme. Yeah, let's all sing a song while we eat them too. Yay. Ooh, yes. Yes, indeed. I enjoy them. Basically, they're all really positive except that for that one. Ooh, yes, indeed. I enjoy the them. Yes, indeed. Is that how you talk? Jar. <laughs> yes, indeed. I stole the cookies from the cookie jar. Caitlin. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, which of these classic <laughs> songs would you want as your anthem? I love trash. I wanted to read that. <laughs> read them, read them, read them. Okay, so I love trash. <laughs> C is for cookie. Doing the pigeon. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I song. So the alphabet? The, um, the baddie bat. Rubber ducky. You have to pick oh, rubber, rubber ducky. ducky. You're yeah. so fine. Oh. oh. <laughs> I love Elmo. Yay. Okay, Yay. so you're Elmo, but you already knew that, didn't you? <laughs> you're, so you're, you're narcissistic. <laughs> you speak in the third person. <laughs> Caitlin, you said, Caitlin wants cookies. Caitlin loves <laughs> Let's face it. You love this furry little guy like everyone else on the planet, and you're hoping for this result. He's lovable, huggable, and just so darn cute. Aww. You may not always have Elmo's patience or wide-eyed innocence, but a heart... At heart, you're a total softy who loves to learn and sing and enjoy life just that like beautiful. him. Caitlin, are you so proud of yourself for being Elmo? I'm so proud of myself. I would be proud. <laughs> oh my god, that's my new theme song. Na, na, da, 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 da. This, the show is welcome. Welcome to Caitlin's world. <laughs> no, like, in, world. Like in really quiet. With Brandy and Alexa. <laughs> like, fine. <laughs> Let's, Let's stick with the third wheel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I like that. It's okay. All right, guys. Um, so that's all I have for Way Back Wednesday. Do you guys have anything else? Um, no, I'm good. That's pretty much it we have for Way Back Wednesday. I don't know if you guys want to play some music now. Yes. Let's do some music. All right. Do you know what we're going to play first? So I have some options. Yeah. Um, Blank Space by Taylor Swift. It's like brand new. I want to play it. It's a really good song. Okay, so we'll, we'll play that. We'll play yeah. Blank, Blank Space by Taylor Swift. And then also we can choose between these two throwback songs, The Sweet Escape by Gwen Stefani or So Yesterday by Hilary Duff. Which um, one do you guys want? I... I'm feeling the sweet escape. Okay. Yeah, I we'll played Hillary Duff last week, so That's I true. need some Gwen Stefani in my life. All right, awesome. And all you listeners need her in your life, too, so. It's true. Exactly. Here we go. So we'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> 